Hey there and welcome to Xbox On. If you've been following the channel, you'll know we've been playing a lot of Xbox Game Pass recently. It's a subscription service that grants you access to a library of over 100 Xbox games to play on Xbox One. You pay the monthly fee and you can download however many of the games you want to play. What's really cool about Game Pass is that new titles are added every month. So today I thought we'd take a quick look at everything that's being added to Game Pass in July. Here's what you can look forward to. Dead Island is the perfect game to kick off our first Game Pass update. What better way to capture the magic of summertime than visiting the tropical paradise of Banoi Island and smashing in a zombie's face using a giant wooden oar. Yes, there is trouble in paradise, bodies in the swimming pool, blood on the dance floor and beaches covered in guts. Hey, at least it'll distract the seagulls from trying to eat our chips, right? If you didn't visit Banoi back on Xbox 360, you're in for one of the craziest holidays of your life. The island is heaving with zombies and littered with everyday items you can turn into weapons, from simple kitchen knives all the way up to more brutal devices you build from scrap. When you start chopping up the undead with an electrified machete, it's like you're playing a Dead Rising game in first person. You have the option to swing mindlessly or take direct control of your arm, letting you chop off specific body parts which is fun in a ghoulish way. This definitive edition is the remastered version for Xbox One, polishing the game to 1080p and 30 frames per second. The zombies still look absolutely minging, but it's the prettiest they'll ever be. For our money, the best way to play is to enroll three friends for a spot of four-person co-op. Running around the island as a gang, beating zombies to death with hammers may not be the holiday you signed up for, but it's damn fun anyway. July turns out to be a pretty great month for wannabe zombie killers in Games Pass. Resident Evil 6 is a very different game to Dead Island. It's just as silly, you get to hunt a giant snake and have a boxing match above a sea of lava, but the focus is on urgent survival rather than crazed zombie slaying. You won't find yourself hitting the undead with oars in Resident Evil 6, but you will find yourself desperately lining up a headshot with just one bullet left in the barrel. It's tense stuff. The big change in Resident Evil 6 is that the game contains several campaigns, each packing in as much action as you'd normally find find in a Resident Evil game. It kind of feels like four games in one, each offering a slightly different take based on the hero at heart. So while Chris Redfield gets to play the action man in a series of massive firefights, Leon has a more traditional horror experience set in creepy schools and graveyards. Then there's newcomer Jake, who spends most of his story escaping an invincible hunter and using martial arts to deck giant insect assassins. Finally, you get to play as Ada Wong in a story that fills in the gaps and offers some much needed answers. If you don't like one strand of the story, you only need to switch to a different character to find yourself in a totally different game. Yes, it's very different to the slow, subtle horror of this year's Resident Evil 7, but I'm glad there's still room for the sillier take on the series too. And if anything, it's a whole lot of game to keep that games pass in constant use. The other games might get jealous. My personal pick of this month's Games Pass editions has to be Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition. That's quite an extravagant name, but this is quite an extravagant game. For starters, it's the only adventure I know of that mixes Mexican wrestling with dimension-shifting platforming. Yes, you are a humble man, brought back from the afterlife with a magical luchador mask that turns you into a body-slamming acrobat. Any enemy stupid enough to get in your way not only gets pummeled, but is likely to find their body being used as a battering ram against other goons. It's a really chunky combat system for you to wrap your fingers around. The game also takes some cues from the Metroid games, with a wide open world that can only be explored by collecting new abilities. What starts with a simple jump soon evolves into uppercuts, power bombs, side dashes. Often you're having to string all these moves into one stunning combo. When you eventually learn how to flip between the land of the living and the land of the dead, it only gets more complicated. It reminds me a lot of Ori and the Blind Forest, but it's a pretty close competition as to which game has the toughest platforming. Either way, fans of 2D action adventures would be crazy to miss this one. Of course, one of the best things about Xbox Game Pass is the huge range of genres it covers. So as well as zombie smashing and Mexican wrestlers, we also get a burst of Formula One action in F1 2015. This was the first proper F1 game made for Xbox One and felt like a big step up for the series. The action is silky smooth and Codemasters had great fun playing with the improved feedback in the Xbox controller triggers. You can really feel when the car isn't happy under your thumbs, with different racing surfaces giving the vibration more or less kick. This this iteration of the game also added a bit more in the way of interaction with your engineer. Whether you're discussing your tyres degrading or potentially troublesome weather changes on the horizon, there's a clearer sense of being part of a larger team. And with some 20 tracks included, there's plenty of tarmac here for you to master. 
If you've never played Monaco before, you might be a little confused as to what you're seeing. This is a top-down stealth game with the unique gimmick that you can only see the level in your direct line of sight. Everything is shrouded in darkness until you start to move, casting beams of light into the world. Anything can be hiding in that darkness, from tough guards looking to crack your skull to shiny coins for you to swipe. Move at speed and the changing angles of light can resemble a crazy disco ball, with shadowy corners flashing with brief colours as you go sprinting by. Get your head around the unusual lighting system and you can dig into one of the smartest co-op games we've ever played. Each level involves a crime of some kind, and you and up to three friends select from a gang of robbers to try and pull them off. Each character has a unique skill, like lockpicking or a sleep dart for guards, so the combination of powers you bring into the world can have a big impact on how the job unfolds. It's a pretty tense game playing as a lone wolf, but really sparks into life with four burglars all trying to coordinate their actions. It's all wrapped up in a really stylish skin, giving off a Metal Gear Solid meets Ocean's Eleven vibe. I definitely recommend rounding up some friends for couch co-op on this one. You'll be thick as thieves in no time. The Flame in the Flood is one of those survival games where your natural bodily functions are your enemy. You're getting hungry, thirsty and cold and must rely on Mother Nature to supply you with the ingredients needed to craft your way to a safer life. What makes life even scarier in this game is that those ingredients are spread across islands dotting a roaring river. It's your job to travel down the river, hoping to find new islands full of useful items and maybe a more permanent solution to your dire situation. You may have played plenty of survival games in the past, things like Don't Starve or The Long dark, but having to explore lots of smaller islands feels like a great twist on the genre. You'll never know if your next island is full of healing plants or just a load of wild animals that want to chew you up. At first you'll feel relatively powerless as your tiny raft is washed from hellhole to hellhole, but as you begin to upgrade the boat, giving you greater control over where you go and arm yourself with useful tools, your mind begins to shift from survival to an exciting sense of adventure. This is a great little game and one well worth exploring, so why not hop on your raft and see where it takes you today. I'll be honest, Bard's Gold has slightly passed me by until now, but this is exactly the kind of hidden gem that Game Pass is so good at unearthing. As you can see, it has an old school heart beating in its chest, as you venture into dungeons, hunting for treasures and the key to the next room. What separates this from retro action games is that the levels are randomly selected each time you play, so you'll face a new challenge every time you re-enter the world. This means that it's quite hard to learn the game off by heart and you can expect to die again and again, especially if you turn up the difficulty and try to play with no checkpoints. You're given a tiny fighting chance however, as every time you die you can invest your treasure in stat boosts and power ups that stay with you on your next run through. Just by trying to tackle the castle again and again you'll find your hero getting gradually stronger and pushing deeper into the game. It plays like a mix of Splunky, already included in Game Pass, and Rogue Legacy, a great roguelike platformer on Xbox One. Stick with it and you'll eventually make some progress. A good thing that Game Pass doesn't hurry you to finish things huh? And there you have it, July's update to Game Pass with loads of new brilliant titles to get yourself into. To sign up and get playing that huge library of games, just hit the link in the description below. And let us know in the comments below what Games Pass games you'll be playing this month and make sure to subscribe to Xbox On to ensure you get all the latest Xbox Game Pass news before anyone else. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye!